to do is to talk to you about the BIOS, UEFI, MBR, and GPT. What I wanted to talk to you first is about the booting procedure, PC firmware, BIOS and UEFI, disk organization, which is the MBR GPT part, and EFI. If you have any questions during, or because you don't understand what I'm saying, please ask. The EFI, we're going to have a look how we access it. And first, we're going to start with the booting procedure. Booting is basically the process of loading an operating system. It's the process, as we all know, which starts when we turn the computer on using the power button or a reset or what have you, or even by a software command, and it ends when the operating system is loaded into memory. When we turn on the computer, there is, of course, no program inside the computer's main memory. So the CPU looks for another program, which is in the firmware, generally in an EEPROM that is located on the motherboard and is run by the CPU to start the booting sequence. This we all know. The boot program then reads the disk to find the bootloader and execute that program. The bootloader program then loads the respective operating system and hands over control to that operating system. There is no basic difference whether the PC boots in BIOS or in UEFI. The sequence of events is basically the same. The only difference is how these two systems do it. You don't have to take notes if, uh, because you will get a copy yeah, later. OK, there are basically two types of firmware in IBM compatible PCs. The BIOS firmware, basic input output system, which was introduced around about 1981. Then we have the unified extensible firmware interface, which came into 2005 and has been being updated since. There is a link if you want to read the specifications, <laughs> which are quite long and have been updated a number of times. So it's always <coughs> difficult to know if you're reading the latest version. I think it's 1700 pages. Yes. There is also another firmware, probably you may or may not have heard it, called Core Boot. Sorry, Core Boot. This is an open source firmware and developed by the open source community. But I won't talk about that, but if you're interested, again, a link for you to read. So, BS and UEFI, two very different systems with the same function. UEFI is much newer and has a different boot mode. It still <coughs> does support the old BIOS style, at least most firmware versions at this moment, but there are some where it will lose it. This BIOS version is generally called legacy BIOS mode, compatibility support mode, or something similar. So, yes? As a cut off date, it's not really that exact. No. Uh, yeah, I, okay. Um, basically, we just said that uh, Microsoft is cutting the support for CSM around about 2021. Because Windows 7 got cancelled, but Microsoft 
sorry, Microsoft says a lot of things and you can't guarantee anything. Okay. UEFI, what does it do? It offers you more benefits such as faster boot time, better security and larger disk support only if you're using GPT and it has a graphical user interface which can often be directly accessed from the OS depending on the OS and the version and so on and so forth. BIOS cannot. To get into BIOS you always have to reboot and press the delete key or what have you. Some OS versions will only work with UEFI. For example, Windows 11 requires UEFI. Others cannot work with UEFI. So is OS 2. Not Arca. <laughs> Some work with both. Legacy BIOS is the old mode and it uses a 16-bit code and it has a limited number of options but is still used with OS 2, Windows 7, 7, Windows 95, ME and a number of others. This is what the normal screen looks like for BIOS and this is FUEFI. And you see the main difference is one is very text oriented and the other is graphical with a lot more function. So, back to the firmware. We said in order to boot, the firmware reads the, be sorry, the bootloader from the disk. How? Depends on the layout of the disk. There are two. The MBR, which we probably all know, the master boot record, and GPT, which is the GUID partition table and UID is the globally unique identifier. <coughs> BIOS can only access MBR but UEFI can access both. So when the system boots using BIOS or UEFI Legacy, it's starting in 16-bit mode. It uses the program in the MVRAM on the motherboard, <coughs> first to do a power on self-test. Sometimes you have LEDs on the motherboard to see if it fails, what is failed. Next, the BIOS goes through each disk in a predetermined order, and that is the boot order which you have put in your BIOS, if it's in the BIOS, and loads the first sector of 512 bytes and puts it into RAM at address 0x7c00, only a 16-bit address. If and only if those 512 bytes end with the hex code AA55, which is effectively the boot signature, will it continue? If the signature is not found, this is the MBR, then it goes on to the next disk, and so on and so forth, until it out eventually finds that signature. If not, you get an error. Some misconceptions about MBR and UFE. UFE requires GPT. No, it doesn't. It's expected, but it doesn't require it. UFE cannot boot with MBR. It can, but it's not advisable. BIOS cannot use GPT. It can, but then you have a special program for doing that, in Linux at least. Okay, communication when we start booting between the OS and the BIOS is accomplished via interrupts. For OS 2, interrupt 10 is the VGA hardware access interrupt, uh, which includes DOS full screen, and this does have implications for using 
Bios Oluefi, and interrupt 13, which is the generic disk access interrupt, which includes bootstrap and trap dump. Here you can see the list of all the BIOS interrupts. And this is the reason that OS2 couldn't start in UEFI mode, because those interrupts are not available in UEFI. Okay, if we have a look now how UEFI boots, it also starts in real mode. After which, the UEFI builds a rudimentary operating system on the platform to enable a 64-bit protected mode. UEFI first scans for available boot entries in the MVRAM. So you have a list of why, where you should, in fact, boot from. These can be in different drives, different partitions. It then will use uh, the default entry and try to read the boot from the sp selected directory from the special GPT EFI partition. I'll come on to what the EFI partition is in a few moments. Communication between OS and UFI is accomplished via UFI services, not interrupts. In the case of Arca OS2, the bootloader relied heavily on the functions supplied by the BIOS, interrupt 10 and 13, until the necessary device drivers are eventually loaded and are available. Thereafter, the BIOS functions are generally no longer required. Because these functions were not available in the UFE, U <laughs> it's a mouthful, isn't it? UEFI firmware it means it is impossible to load OS2 with on a UEFI system, and that we all tried. However, by adding the missing functionality in Arca OS, it is now possible to boot from the UEFI. Booting under UEFI requires an EFI system partition, which is a FAT. 32 partition. Am I telling you guys anything new? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at MBR. We, we, we should all know this basically. The very first sector, your master boot code, your partition tables, and what you see, if this works, the signature. And you think, but I saw AA55. It depends how you represent it, little Indian of what have you. The MBR disk has basically four primary partitions, of which one, we can make an extended partition, and we can use that extended partition to make a lot of logical disks. Nothing new. An MBR disk uses 32 bits to describe the starting point and offset, which means you can only access a maximum of 2 to the 32 bytes times the sector size, which is about 2 terabytes. GPT, completely different. A GPT disk contains a protective MBR. So it still has an MBR. It has a primary header, partition information, which and it has data partitions. It also has a backup partition for the information stored at the beginning of the disk. With Arca OS, it is not possible to initialize a hard disk using LVM. We do have a program for it, init disk, which needs to be used. 
I don't know if that's going to change. I don't know if you know that, uh, Roderick, that uh, we can only use init disk at the moment to format the disk GPT. I don't know if there's going to be any change in 5.1. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's analyze the GPT. First of all, we have a protective MBR. Why do we have a protective MBR? Because some systems will try to access the MBR. This could be from FDisk or a disk administrator in Windows, for example and we don't want it to ruin our GPT. So we have a Soganum protective MBR, and the protective MBR is made protective by, if it was MBR, showing there is no space on the disk. That's the theory. Up to now, it seems to work. Then we have the GPT header. This is located at logical block address one. This header defines the range of logical block addresses that are used by the petition tables and the petition entries. It also defines the location on the disk. It also has a CRC check in it, so we can check, <coughs> sorry, we can check that the GPT table is correct. Previously, you just uh, used the CRC on the disk and you weren't really sure that the information was 100%. Here, <coughs> here you can see the table. What we have, the very first part, is EFI part, EFI petition. Here we have a, a CRC and we have a disk ID. This is 16 bytes long. This identifies the disk. For each partition, there's a corresponding entry in the blocks LBA2 up to what have you. Each entry contains the first and the last LBA of that partition and it's UUID. So we have a UUID for the disk and for each partition. Be careful. They are different. It also contains information about the partition type. Whereas previously in MBR we had certain codes, which we knew then was FAT32 and so on and so forth. Now we have information on the partition type. In Arca OS, we have Arca OS Type 1. If we have a look, we'll see, and this is just one of the entries, the petition type in mixed endian, which means it looks like this. This is how we always describe a GUID. And in this case, that special number is ARCA OS, type 1. If it's something else, it's something else. You also have petition name and some flags. Okay, then the easy bit, the petitions. You see we have up to 128 petitions, but that is an arbitrary number. It was defined by Microsoft. Who else? Actually, there's an unlimited number of petitions you can have. It's not specified as 128, only that Microsoft does it. Okay, to be really safe, GPT also has a backup of the primary petition. So if something goes wrong, it can still get at the information. Okay, GPT and ARCA OS. 
In order to access GPT formatted drive, ArcOS uses a filter driver. The filter driver is called GPT.FLT and it converts the disk addresses from 32 bits to 64 bits within a 32 bit window. La rather like a memory mapping uh, module. This means that the partition is limited to 2 gigabytes for a maximum of 24 partitions. I think that should be enough. Yeah. Typo. Terabytes. Correction. Note that, uh, and then I'll correct it on the handout. This filter driver allows us access to Arca OS Type 1, also to FAT, FAT32, HPS, or JFS. Using this filter driver does have a negative input on the disk performance. It's been estimated around about 15%. Whether you will see that or not depends what you're doing. I haven't really noticed it. I have two machines, approximately the same hardware, but that's the problem. They're not exactly the same hardware. And I see a slight difference. Not when I'm running programs, only during startup. One thing you should realize about GPT, on Arca OS, there is no support for removable devices. We've tried it some time back. So if you have a GPT USB, it doesn't work. So don't bother. But you can still have a FAT32 MBR device. Only Arca OS Type 1 partitions can be assigned a drive letter that will persist. What I mean by this is if you boot the system, you assign a drive letter to the Arca OS partition, and you reboot, it's back there again. This is because in the Arca OS Type 1 partition, there's room for of the drive letter and it is saved there. Type 1 partitions assigned with the drive letter will automatically be mounted by the GPT FLT program or filter mode I say. For other types such as EFI, Win, Basic etc this space is not available. Instead the GPT filter will use information stored in the GPT config file. In the config file, you have a 36 character user ID of the petition, the drive, and the petition type. So, for example, here we have the GUID, it is on drive W, and it's FAT32. You're so quiet, everybody. <laughs> it's almost worrying. OK, this is a partial list of types. What you can see, for example, for, there's an Android operating system with a partition type with a GUID. And here is the OS2 Arc OS type. And this should be the same number I showed you previously. If it's not, it's a typo. But this is really only a very small amount. This you can find back on Wikipedia if you wish. OK, this sizes. While MBR uses 32 bits, GP2, GPT uses 64 bits. So, with this, with a sex size of 512 bytes, the maximum size is 9.4 zeta bytes. 
How big is a zeta byte, you say? Well, that's 9.4 thousand million terabytes. A zeta byte is 10 to the power 21 bytes. That's a lot. So you can fill in all your tax forms quite easily <laughs> and save them. GPT organization. The universal unique identifier, which we said is 128 bits, is, unique, is used to identify objects on the disk. And this is somebody worked out sometime. The UID generated is apparently valid up to the year 34,000 AD, not to be duplicated with another one. This mathematics goes above my head. Unbelievable. As I said, beware for this, you have two types of UUID, the disk and the partition. Here you can see uh, two layouts. I used Windows in this case because it's simpler to display. So here you see your MBR, and you see I have a number of disks, but you see there's not a lot of partitions. Whereas the GPT, well, and then you see various partitions. You have a lot more partitions. I knew that was going to happen. Okay, we have on GPT a special partition called the EFI partition. It is also sometimes called the ESP. So did you know? This is OS, an OS independent partition. So it has nothing to do with whichever operating system you have. If you have UEFI, then you have to have this EFI partition in order to boot. In this partition, it's basically a storage place for drivers, bootloaders, applications, for a number of things. It is mandatory for UFI. If you have Arca OS 2, 5.1, this partition is automatically generated during the installation procedure if it does not already exist. It is a FAT32 par partition, and it's around about 100 megabytes. It can be bigger, it can be smaller, that's up to you. Because if you have a lot of different operating systems, it's advisable to have a bigger EFI, because all the operating systems have their bootloaders in there and other stuff. Normally, you cannot see this partition. It's invisible. However, of course, there are ways to make it visible. Here you see an EFI partition. The drive, and you see here EFI, you see boot, Microsoft, OS2, Refined, and other stuff. And what you see is depending on what you have loaded yourself for systems. In this example, I have three OS's. So, Microsoft, OS2, Ubuntu. Yes? <laughs> the, the other directories which are there are refined, and I'll discuss refined later. I think that's tomorrow or something and a directory of tools. There's also boot, which is in fact the AN launcher, which as you know, with Arca OS, for your AFI, you have a, a launcher. Here you see, if we expand Microsoft, you see it has a load of stuff. Basically, all these are just um, language files. 
I don't know how we're doing that for exactly in uh, 5.1. Do you? Language files? I th okay, oops. Okay, how can we see an AFI partition? In OS2, it's simplicity itself. It's unbelievable easy. You go to computer, system setup, logical volume manual. The simple one. Then, you select the disk. In this case, disk 2. You go to options, set name and letter. Easy. So you say, this partition, I want to have the drive letter X. So when you look at drive letter X, you see what you just saw on the previous slide. Simple. Of course, save and exit, otherwise it doesn't work. Interestingly enough, you probably may or may not have seen this, but you also have the UID from the petition. And it's for this petition, which we have selected. But you think, well, that's not the complete UID. How do I know what it really is? Simple. You can also copy it to the clipboard. Um, under Linux, slightly different. You would then have to do sudo, and basically come in as root. You select then the device, you mount it, and ls minus l gives you a listing which looks something like this. It is different from Arca OS, but then that's always the case with different systems. If you want to use Windows, you're welcome to try. It's a, li <laughs> it's a little more difficult. You first have to find out where your partition is. Only if you go over with your mouse, you get some extra information here, EFI system partition. Yeah. Then you type disk management to identify the EFI partition. You select that disk. You list the partition to get the partition number. You select it, the partition, and you assign it a drive letter. Theory is basically the same. And then exit. You then have to use Notepad. Everybody says, why do I have to use Notepad? I'm going to use the file manager. Okay. If you use the file manager or file explorer, you get an error message. This is what you get. You don't currently have permissions. Oh, you say, well, continue, right? We've all had this problem, continue. And after pressing continue, you get another error message, which tells you you don't have permissions to access the folder. To do this, you need to go to the security tab of a fat 32 partition. Small problem. FAT32 partitions do not have a security tab. So you are stymied. That's why you have to use why you have to use the notepad to get in and look at the files. Because with notepad you can also get a listing. One of the quirks of Windows. One of them. Okay, what should I do? Should I use BIOS or should I use UEFI for ArcOS? Well, that's a decision you have to make for yourself. Uh, the basic decision is, do I have other operating systems on my system? If I do, and they require UEFI, then there's only one solution, UEFI. But let's have a look. BIOS. It is faster because there is no GPT filter. DOS and WinOS 2 support is not necessary. Sounds a little bit strange, but this has to do with the interrupts. 
there's a minimum system RAM requirement because we're not loading anything extra. So we have a maximum RAM available. OS2 was designed with BIOS in mind. It is limited to OS2 partitioning tools. I think we've all had that problem. You use your LVM and it says there is something wrong with the disk organization. That we don't have with the UEFI. Thank God. Okay, UEFI can be installed alongside other operating systems that require GPT. GPT is fantastic. Our disk size is no longer limited. And the number of partitions is not limited. Yeah, we have only uh, B to Z, but <laughs> there'll probably come a solution to that if necessary. As I said, no problem with disk misalignment. It is required if secure boot is required, because secure boot only works with UEFI. Um, recently, my system was automatically updated to Windows 11. Didn't get a chance to say yes or no. And I don't have secure boot on. So I have Windows 11 without secure boot. That's why I said not always. And another advantage is the boot partition does not have to be in the first 512 gigabytes of the disk. That's the difference with GPT. So it's up to you. And also, last but not least, we have better DOS game support with UFI because we control the display directly and are not limited to what the BIOS did by its interrupts. Correct? Yeah. We have a full color boot logo. Now I know everyone's going to say, right, but we don't have to. Okay, any questions up till now? I don't know if I can answer them because I am not an expert on this. And apparently everyone's still sleeping. No, seriously, any questions? Yeah. I will repeat what you say because you're not on the microphone. Uh, basically, what is said that uh, currently disks are provided with uh, uh, alignment according to Windows. A lot of disks are also provided already formatted GPT, which means if you use a disk and you want to use BIOS, you're going to have to reformat them as MBR. And that's basically what you're saying. And it means you don't have the problems of uh, the alignment. Have I said that correctly, Sandra? Uh, so you mean the, uh, you mean the thing about alignment of the uh, physical? Oh, the physic because of the physical disalignment, yeah. Well, that, that's the problem of BIOS and GPT. Uh, and, yeah, correct. You look as if you have a question. Anybody else? Well, in that case, thank you. <laughs>